Let's do this. It's live time on Expat Hoops. Welcome, everyone. We're here once again. Uh, what is this? Our third live now? Something like that. Second with a guest, but third one because we did the NBA Draft Live. NBA Draft Live was our last. I hope you all enjoyed that, and I hope you enjoy this one just as much. Uh, we're here with another former guest, professional athlete extraordinaire, Michael Morrison. Mike. Two, two-time, now three-time former guest. Three-time, yeah, yes, I, that's I true. I think that's the record, I believe. Um, I'll keep coming back to make sure I hold it. Pretty close to it. Well, that's, that's why we like to keep you here. World worldwide. How you guys doing? All right. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, so we got you here today to talk about, you know, how you've been. And uh before the uh um the live started, of course, you were talking to us about getting around on crutches. Yes, yes. And I know, you know, it's a little depressing to talk about an injury, but that's where we are. It's what you got. So tell us what it was, tell us how you're doing how you're on the up and up, I'll let everybody know. Um, ruptured patella tendon Ugh. in the finals in Portugal. Uh, game, oh, and, oh, in game three of the finals. Uh, so right at the end of the season. So um, yeah, cry, cried for an hour. And then after that, I was like, all right, well, let's deal with it. So that's what we're doing. That's what you got to do. And that actually kind of takes us a little bit to where you've been over the last couple of times, uh, last couple of years, almost two years since we talked to you. Uh, you were one of our very early guests, early supporters. Uh, I think at that time you were just about to head to Yolova in Turkey. Uh, we'd like to hit that stop with you a little bit, a little bit of a time in Cyprus. And then you finished off, as you just mentioned, in Portugal uh, with another Mason I believe he'd be alum, but he certainly was a longtime Mason player, John Arledge. Uh, you guys both played for Porto in Portugal. Fantastic mm-hmm. stop there. Um, so let's go all the way back to about the last time we caught we we were talking to you. What were things like with Yalova in Turkey? Um, first of all, I loved being in Turkey. Um, I was a, a a small ferry ride about an hour away from Istanbul, so. We had a good team. We um, won a lot of games, um, and Istanbul was close. And I really, I really enjoyed my time out there. I did not finish. I, I I finished my season there, but I did not finish the season there because um, I don't know. I don't know how, how much. I've never talked about this story online, but I always give expat the, the 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 exclusive. You know. Um, there you go. Oh, we we love to hear this. Uh, all right. Whatever. You know us one way or another. You can talk about it. You don't have to. Up to you. <laughs> no, I'll talk about it. Who cares? Whatever. Um, unfortunate situation where my wife's brother was was murdered. He got shot. Oh, my gosh. Oh my God. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I was – obviously, I had to go home for a little bit to for the funeral and help, help my wife and all this and that. And sadly, the team tried to keep me from leaving. Um, <sighs> so, I had to explain to them. Oh, I'm sorry mm. for the confusion. I'm not asking you, can I go? I'm letting you know I, I'm going. And if you guys got to release me, then just release me. That's, you know, that's okay. Um, they decided to do the petty route of not releasing me, holding my contract, forcing me to come back while they bring my replacement out there. And basically, I was out there not playing. And um, they wouldn't, wouldn't release me to go play for a different team. So long year. And, and then they stopped paying and he came playoff time. So then I ended up leaving, leaving before the season was over. Oof. But I, tell you, I don't want to put a stain on the whole program because that was management and, 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 and co- coaches. But um, the players there, my teammates and the, the city and Turkey, I love being in Turkey. It was a great situa- situation. It was fun. Um, I have nothing but great memories. My teammates are great. And actually went on to still finish and win win that win that um that season and move up to to top division Turkey. Um, so I was happy for all my guys, but I don't negotiate with with nonsense, you know. I mean, obviously I had to go home, so that's how things can be overseas. So I've given you horror stories before, and there's mm-hmm. another one. <laughs> yeah, well, you've given us horror stories before. We're no uh, we're no um, 
spring chickens when it comes to horror stories from a lot of other people. Um, right, right. It's a, it's a dog eat dog world, you know. <laughs> it's just kind of how it goes. Yeah. Um, so, tell us about your next stop, and then uh, how you how you ended up in the uh, in the recovery phase of your time. Tell me where. Tell me where the years run together. I went from Turkey to where. You know, Cyprus. That's, that's a great question. Cyprus. Cyprus was next. Yep. Yeah. Years are really uh, running together these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My brain doesn't work anymore. I might have some concussions. Um, Cyprus. Went to Cyprus. Um, to Cyprus. What, Cyprus is obviously I played it before my rookie year, so I, I knew what place I was going to. I knew I would um, enjoy being there, and I, and they were playing international competition. So I was told we were playing international international FIBA competition. So I went there to play internationally and to play with my at the time assistant coach from my rookie year, now head coach, who I knew knew his basketball very well. Um, got there and it turns out we did not, we were not playing international competition. We were playing as play-ins. So I'm right away like I was lied to from the beginning. But I'm like, all right, well, if we got to go do play-ins, we're going to go do play-ins. First game we play against was against who? FC Porto. Mm. The, team I, the team I ended up going to later that year. Um, playing against seven foreigners. We only had three. Um, I gave them all I had that game. Really left it all out there. 17-7 was really fought. We played a close game. They they beat us and they ended up winning the rest of the way through and, and, and playing into, in the people for a while. Um, so I kind of went there to play internationally, and when that wasn't happen, didn't happen. I kind of was down about that, um, and actually was ready to go. But I didn't act on that because I knew the coach. I told him I would come there. I wasn't going to leave the coach, you know, in a situation. So I'm like, fine, I'm going to stay. I'm going to keep my grievances to myself. Well, then they decided to release my coach because we weren't winning the games by enough points. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that happened probably um, late November or December, and I kind of politely asked, told him, you know, because the league, the personal league itself is just, it's young, it's not a lot of talent, it's a little bit too easy. Um, I was bored, um, so I wanted to leave. So when the coach left, I asked him, yo, can, you, can I get released? And they told me, you know, we'll try to do, to do what we can, but we have to find a replacement first. The GM was great there. Uh, shout out to Angelo, he was great. Um, worked with me. I worked with them. I took, they took their, they, they, when they found a replacement for me, they let me leave. And then I ended up going to play me and John were talking for quite a while and ended up going to FC Porto to finish the season. We actually have somebody in the chat. Uh, so we want to try to get it timely. We'll, we'll jump around a little bit here. The live is a lot, you know, uh, less formal, uh, than our normal recordings go, but whatever, man, do you think? Yep. So, uh, David, who, uh, by the way, runs uh, the it's through by George uh, Twitter handle, but GMU recruiting, I mean, seriously, does an amazing job with it. Uh, If you're looking to see uh, highlights from people, video highlights, he's on top of things. Uh, He's part of the, the by George chat. I mean, Seriously, you need to go check it out if you aren't already aware of it. More than likely, Mason fans are already aware of it, but it's fantastic. But he's coming in with a little bit of an angle here um, in regards to recruiting. He's asking, when you were a college athlete, what was it like when coaches went out recruiting? Um, I guess essentially his question is also, how open were they with the players about who they were targeting, positions of need, and et cetera? And I'll add on to that. I wonder if he's also kind of going with uh, sometimes when you're – kind of like the point person. I don't, I don't remember what the phrase is. I'm blanking on it because it's been a long day, but essentially, uh, you know, when you're seeing either somebody that could potentially take your spot or even if it's somebody that uh, is kind of going to be next up after you. Um, the recruiting process, one with the coaches is, no, they're not telling you who, well, like, okay, this, we're going to bring you in and develop you and you're going to have these people ahead of you or recruiting somebody else the same position the same year. No, they're telling you you're the man. And they have to because you're being recruited by multiple schools and everybody's going to tell you that you're the man. So if I tell you, you got to fight for your spot, which you got to do no matter where you go, then you're going to go somewhere else right away. You got to try to land the guys you, you want, you know. So they're going to they're gonna make you the, the bell of the ball in recruiting. Now, when you get there, 
that's when it gets real and they're telling you, listen, we don't need none of y'all. You're going to come here and compete. Your scholarship is only worth one year. If you're not coming here competing, doing the right thing in school, t- t- handling the business, there's more kids to recruit, you know, and that, it's a fact, you know, you got to come in and, and keep everybody focused. But no, when they're recruiting, you're the better of the ball. That's just, that's just how it works. Um, some people have more of an idea of what's going on than others. I had no clue what's going on. I signed to Mason. I'm not sure if I knew what conference we were in. I just I signed to Mason because I like Mason. Um, I missed it. The back half of that question was, give me the back half. Talking, sure, oh, I, think, I think he was asking, like, once you were there, what was the conversation? Did you know, like, who else was being recruited, like, you know, right, no, after you no. and that sort of thing? No, you don't. Well, well, when you're, okay, you don't know about after. Once you're there, who's coming after you? You're gonna know everybody's gonna crew after because you're on the team and you're worried about okay who we got coming how we want to get how we gonna get better. Now every person is different. For me and people that are competitive and like I'm never worried about. I had plenty of guys come in behind me that told me they're taking my spot. Johnny Williams told me he's taking my spot. Eric Copes, you know, we had John Alvarez. We had a lot of guys that came in saying. Oh, I'm taking your spot. And I'm like, I laughed at him. I'm like, you know, we're about to go at it every day and practice to take my spot. Right. Like, you know, so you, you, you help bring, if you want to be a winning team and you want to be a good program, you got to be, not be afraid of the guys that's coming in. You got to be willing to bring in the best talent you can. When they come on a visit, make sure they have the best time they can, paint the school in the best light possible because you want to, at the end of the day, you want to win. You got to bring in the best guys possible. And then hopefully they at least elevate you up to still be on that court. But, Hopefully you're competitive enough to have enough confidence in self that you think you'll be on the court regardless. And this actually kind of goes back, I think, to I know that we talked about it, or I'm pretty sure that we talked about it last time we had you on. I think it was episode three. We also talked about it when we had Ike on too, about how, especially at that time with Mason, I, I mean, now with the benefit of hindsight, we can see exactly who went pro, but so many people went pro and you're talking about before you, during your time, and after, very, very talented people coming in. Yeah. Uh, so, and <laughs> a lot of you yeah. are still playing. And, and, you know, some of yeah. you that aren't playing are really more of like, you know, father time catches up. It's not necessarily because of a lack of ability or anything like that. So, a really, really good time in Mason basketball history. Uh, so, it's certainly some good insight there, which is a good reminder to anybody else that's uh, joining in on the YouTube live. Feel free to ask your questions of Mike. We're doing this a lot less formally than a, a normal. Uh, episode because we do get the interaction we want the interaction uh but we're jumping around a little bit we talked a little bit about his time in turkey uh talked a little bit about the second stint in cyprus um we kind of alluded to it a little bit too with uh your time with fc porto who you wound up playing with your team in cyprus and uh who you just finished off the year with uh with john arledge um (laughs) <laughs> one one thing we'll probably go to first because this is a good timely question liam in the chat says how do you still look the same as you were in college which actually <laughs> that might be a really good segue into when we're going to ask you anything that you want to promo there's an interesting thing that you're involved with now that i would say probably has something to do with it. <laughs> no this is, i wish i could say this but this is brand new um liam <laughs> My short answer would be black don't crack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, listen, I, when you got a beard, I pluck out all my grades. I get a few grades, I pluck them, pluck those out. And then, you know, I just, I still exercise, I stay in shape, you know, I'm still playing. So my, you know, my body is, is still there. We'll, but during quarantine, I was a fat boy. If that makes you feel any better, I well, have <laughs> we we can relate to that. Yeah, of course. Uh, finally, beat me something up. that we can relate to. Yeah, quarantine of, uh... beat me up. I had once I saw myself in the mirror one time, one day, I had to go in the fridge and dump all everything and, and snap back into shape quickly. Like, see, yeah. that just hasn't happened for us. So, yeah. so, motivation. I was like, if I go overseas right now, I'm getting sent home off of the plane. Oh no, get back on that same plane. Time to go home. So. <laughs> Um, got any moisturizers you can recommend though? No, <laughs> but, uh, so, um, w- with that in mind, um, I know you're, you're going through an injury and we'll, we'll kind of get that, get into that in a minute. Um, what is it that you see for yourself going forward? I know it might be hard to think about that. And, and since you're going through some rehab and, um, injury, uh, recovery and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, what are you going to do after all that? What are you going to try to go for? You got any goals that uh, you have in mind? 
All right. So, I mean, um, one with the knee, I want to rehab it. I'm not sure if I'm ever returning back to play. I mean, right now mm -hmm. we're probably sitting 50, 50. Um, mm -hmm. But what I am sure of is I want to get back to where I can. So I'm rehabbing it 110% to where if I decided to go, then I'm, I'm ready to go. But um, I'm not sure. But what I, what I am right now is like you guys alluded to was this live 21. Um, me and my best friend just launched a, a new product on the market. Um, kind of blowing up right now in Tampa and starting to send it out uh, nationwide. Uh, this here is, oh, let me get a closer view for you, you know, try to make sure you can see it, you can see it. Looks good, looks luxurious, see that gold diamond? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is not alcohol, it is alcohol recovery. So I've always been a drinker. Um, in college, out of college, all through my professional career, obviously smart, well, smart, not, not overdoing it, but Still, this right here is for if you if you have a few drinks, it's it, it helps you recover. You wake up with no hangover, no side effects, no grogginess, any of that. Um, loaded with electrolytes, more electrolytes than Pedialyte, and this really what we've been working on for three years now, and now it's coming to fruition, and it's in the marketplace. So check and it out. And just to kind of circle back with that, pull in anything here that I'm forgetting, but it's on Instagram just uh liv 21 mm -hmm. j-u-s-t l-i-v 21 mm -hmm. same thing except it's a website j-u-s-t l-i-v 21.com just live 21 at on instagram and on dot com yes. okay so i got everything website is incredible pull up in another tab uh look at it while you're listening to this mm -hmm. um you're talking about it took three years to develop what was that like? And I mean, obviously you've got somebody who's a partner in this, but what was it like in terms of, you know, from the beginning to the, to the launch uh, and getting you there? And um, you know, you're talking about all the different things that it can do for recovery, but what was the process like behind the scenes before you got to the launch, which was pretty recent? The, pro the process was long and slow. I mean, we started before the pandemic. We came up with the idea summer 2019, kind of started the brain working and we kind of were rushing it. I mean, this final product is much better than what we were planning on putting out in 2020. We were just like, okay, we can get this out by the summer. This, that, 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 that. COVID said, no, stop. But it, you know, I don't want to say COVID was a blessing, but it definitely helped us when it came to this specifically because we had to slow down, do everything properly. But honestly, you have a lot of downtime when you're playing basketball. So it's difficult me being um, internationally and having to communicate everything with me and my friend, um, Reggie, my, my co-founder. We had to communicate everything through phone, different hours, seven hour difference. And he's doing taste tests and the bottles. He's sending it to me overseas, all different type of stuff. It just was, we really had to be patient and really take our time and do every single little thing. And it's a thousand moving pieces. So it took a long time, but we didn't want to rush it. We didn't need to rush it. And when time was right, the time was right. So what is, is it just the one, I guess, flavor at this point in time? Lemon um, berry. Lemon berry. Ooh. Lemon berry. Good. And yes, it's our only flavor right now, but we do have other flavors coming out and other products in the Live 21 universe. Can't tell you what yet. I would have to kill you. I don't want to have to kill you. I like you. Yeah, and there's a lot of people watching us now too. So yes, that's yes, a, lot right. of, a lot of stuff. Just live21.com. So that's what, that's what it is. Um, uh, and yeah, this is what I'm really putting my time into that and rehab. This is what I'm doing right now, you know. Trying to give yourself an opportunity to become an entrepreneur in case yeah. uh, the 50 50 dice roll that you said doesn't really work well, out in your favor. If I played more basketball, it'll be for fun. This, I, I really believe this because um, it works. I, I know anybody that drinks does not want to wake up feeling like, feeling like you, you know. Sick yeah, somehow it doesn't hit the same when you're in your 30s or 40s or even more than when you're in your 20s. Uh, those bounce backs are a little slower. It happens, it happens mm -hmm. quick, don't it? Like you just mm -hmm. one day you can go and then the next day you just can't bounce back no more. Like, that says uh, that says live 21. We need that like live 40, you know, 45. <laughs> well, no, you see, you see, you live <laughs> like you're 21 again. So yeah, yeah no matter back. what your age, you always can right. live 21. Yes, exactly. There we go. Now, now we're getting it. Now yep. we're getting it. I, yep. I declare this the unofficial hangover drink of expat hoops. Yeah. I'm going to pour them right behind you on that, that, that shelf right there. It's going to always be back there. I'm mm -hmm. sending you the package. Well, that yeah. sounds good to us. We're, we're in the DC area. And like you said, uh, you've got it out right now in the Tampa area um, <laughs> and looking to get it 
into other areas, how, how long do you, would you estimate that it's going to take to get to the, some of those other areas? Three more days. Three more days. Okay. Uh, that's not bad. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cause right now we're on Kickstarter. So, I mean, yeah, I, I don't think oh, anybody okay. can order it on Kickstarter right now. Okay. But we're, um, once Kickstarter ends, we're, we're launching our, our, right on our website, you can order. So you are able to order directly to, to your home, four packs, eight packs, 12 packs very soon. So if you want some, it's very attainable. We got it for you. There you go. Get that into, uh, get that into sub one and chow hall on uh, Mason's campus. <laughs> if it even still exists, God, I don't yeah, know. Well, Mason chow hall changes, definitely does man. not exist. So. Yep. Yeah. That, that, that's what all, did that even I, exist when you were there, Mike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chow yeah. hall? Okay. I forget yeah. exactly when that, uh, when that went I'm, out. So. I'm not sure. Right now they got all type of different stuff going in Mason. Oh, yeah. Man. It's it's probably probably a recovery world. drink from chow hall, but that's, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. That's a different story entirely. Um, yeah, when you go on Mason's campus these days, it, it looks it looks different than when you've been there. The, I haven't the, been able to get up there since the pandemic hit, so it's been a while for me. So now I'm going to go. Yeah, up there it looks right. it looks even more different. Like they right. they well, reconstructed in, Robinson One and all that stuff. So like, innovation is tradition. Okay, yeah. and I have no problem with that. Keep changing it. Yep, yep. You just got to find your way around again. That's a problem. Mm-hmm. You're gonna end up in the library, and nobody wants to be there. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got some more stuff in the chat. Uh, I think Liam kind of said something. Uh, you've, we've kind of danced around it a little bit, but how much longer do you want to play professionally before you become a coach at Mason? Uh, or I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll add this and say that, you know, slash entrepreneur and whatever would be next for you. And I know you said uh, kind of in the uh, context of our conversation uh, that, you know, you probably would want to play for fun at this point. But I mean, how much longer, you know, assuming recovery, you know, goes well. Uh, you know, do you want to play, or is there any other countries that you might want to check off on your list? Well, that is two different two different questions because mm-hmm. I'm good at the one, compound questions. Right. One is is do I want to play? I feel like I'm almost being asked, am I fulfilled? I've satisfied with my career 10, 10 years, many countries. I want I can't, I don't know how many countries I've touched. Um a lot of great games, a lot of wins, a lot of losses, a lot of highs and lows. I'm satisfied with my career. For sure. So, um, if I left the game today, then I would, you know, I'll be, I'll be happy. Um, I would still go overseas and watch a lot of friends play because, you know, and just just um, vacation a little bit, watch basketball. But I'll be satisfied. Now, the second part of that question was, where else do I want to go? And that, I want to go everywhere. There's a lot of places I haven't been. I've touched all through Europe, but only a little in Asia. I haven't touched Africa at all. Middle East places I want to go. It's, it's it's a lot to see in the world. Have not been to South America at all. Um, so uh, we hear uh, basketball is pretty big in the Philippines. I, I was going to say, you, uh, Gabe Norwood, you should. I I, I uh, here's another plug for us. We rec- I recorded it earlier on with Jonathan Bullock, uh, former Cleveland State star. He actually was teammates with Gabe for a couple of years in the Philippines. Uh, played a little bit in South Korea as well. So the Asian market is certainly one that you could take a look at. Another one of uh, our friends of the pod, Devin Oliver, is going to be going back to Japan for a second yeah. stint. I'm going uh, to his wedding in, 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 a, in a few days. Yep, he's, he's going to be married here soon. So a lot of good things happening in his world too. Uh, so certainly Asia is a good market for you to go to. And of course, uh, if any way we can make a, an arrangement to tag along and cover Mike Morrison <laughs> in person, we're all mm. for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, you know, I played a little bit in Thailand, so I played in the Philippines. Um, I played a game there. I did not get to catch Gabe out there, but Gabe is really a celebrity out there. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, really, it's crazy. He's mm-hmm. he's on billboards, so it's pretty yep. cool. I mean, we can see a little bit of that through Instagram where there's sponsored posts, and uh, mm-hmm. you can tell it's not just that he's sponsoring everything. He could probably be picky, and he's he's doing yeah. that kind of thing. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. You love to see people doing that. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, um we, Let's we see got here. a we got a question in the chat actually that segues into something that I was just going to ask about Perfect. because uh, we got somebody that wants to know about restaurant Rex in Porto because he's looking to uh, get there in the next year or so. Um, what was it like off the court there, and uh, how Listen, did you kind of get along? Let me tell you something about about Porto. It is probably it's one of the world's best kept secrets. It's remarkable. Like food's good, people are nice. It's not too busy, but it's, it's plenty to do. And the views are like crazy. You get down by the river, and it's like you, you're like walking down the hills and you turn. Once you can see outside the buildings, it's a big river. 
hills, buildings, bridges, boats, music, people, sunshine. It is really nice. I'm trying to tell you, if you have not, and it's, and it's affordable. That's another thing. Where everything's in place right now, take an Uber ride 20, 30, 20, 30 minutes, and you, it's like five euro. It's crazy. Like, Man. So, yeah. You Good can, soccer you, you there, are, too, because Porto is an excellent club for FC that as well. Porto, FC Porto Soccer Club, um, one of the best in the world. Pack the arena out. You know, it's just really, it's just really, it's, it's a great place. It's a great the, place. Uh, the launching point for the special one, uh, Mr. Mourinho, back when he won his first uh, European title. So, yeah. Um, any any I particular? Would, I, would, I would highly advise. Um, I am not the biggest foodie or restaurant person, mm, okay. but um, we would go consistently to um, Marai Sushi. Oh, it's like it's like it's like it's it's weird. It's a buffet, but it's not really a buffet. It's not like okay, we go buffet, get your food. It's a nice restaurant. It looks really nice, expensive. You sit down. There's iPads kind of at the table. You pick what you want, as much as you want. Just press enter. They bring bring the food out and keep doing that to your heart's content. And you get and the food is high quality, good food. Um, and once you're done eating, you're like, man, that had to be 60, 70 euro, like for sure. It's like 20 euro. It's, it's, you eat good on a great, great price. I, I, I just fell in love with that place because the people were super nice. Um, but I'm sure it's a lot more, more dining and seafood and all this all, all type of stuff so the food is good so i think I don't david, have a special restaurant so i think david, david might have. be satisfied here with that answer and he wants okay where do i drink at uh we obviously know oh. what, he, what he wants to drink in conjunction uh with live 21 but uh where <laughs> where's he also drinking um dang I, I have to get this right um they're gonna kill me if i don't get this right these are the greatest people in the world um I think it's called Royal Cocktail Bar. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I mean, these people make like gourmet drinks. <laughs> Royal sitting down Cocktail there. Bar, eh? I used to go there and sit there, like just go sit there on an off day. And I, I'm pretty sure it's what it's called. Sit there and they just, I'd be like, they'd be like, what do you want? Just make me something. Then I finished that one. Make me something else. All right, all right, make here me we drinks. Go. Yeah, this looks like, uh, this looks they're like, they're really, room. they're really good. Looking at their bar, Instagram I don't say right bartenders. Now. I feel like I'm selling them short by saying bartenders. They make like really nice drinks. So this is a another. Well, we'll we're gonna get in the entrepreneurial spirit here. Um, this will perhaps be a partnership between us and Mike Mo. Uh, but maybe instead of the Michelin guide, we'll start doing the overseas expat hoops guide to where you eat, where you drink. So maybe we start doing that. Um, okay, put me ahead. Put me ahead of the drinks. Uh, okay. Know. I mean, we already know what you can drink in conjunction with it to make sure that you recover. Uh, but I mean, I'm I'm all ready to go. Uh, so hopefully that answers some of your questions, David, again. And, and I want to make sure that I'm promoing it again. David runs the Mason recruiting Twitter handle. Does I an amazing that. job. I definitely need to see that, Dave. I'm, I'm going to check you out for sure. Um, oh, my goodness. It's... I never know where to go on Twitter. I'm always kind of lost. So. Oh, uh, stick Bring with us. Back, we'll we'll get you there. Back. He does a fantastic job. I mean, like literally if I, my mindset is like, I, I kind of was a recruiting junkie a little bit too, but in terms of like how he actually executes it is not only meets my expectations of what I would do, he far exceeds it. So he doesn't. Yeah. Fantastic don't you love when that's like, dang, I wouldn't even thought of that. Yeah, pretty much. And his capabilities are way more than mine. So it's in good <laughs> hands with him. Just go ahead and follow him. It's all right for sure. Don't regret I, it. I want you to shoot me that please. Oh, definitely will. Yeah. Um, so obviously we're we're looking for any feedback in the comment section. We uh, are looking at them. Uh, I know Sean's there. Thanks for chiming in. Uh, he wanted to know earlier on, this is, you know, we'll, we'll take this as a serious question. Is there going to be a <laughs> Live 21 Mini Cooper driving around Mason anytime soon? Uh, hey, listen, we're definitely, the plan is definitely to be in D.C. and get up in that, that Nova area. Uh, so, Maybe, maybe so. Maybe you put me, give me a good idea. Is that something I should look into? Yeah. Follow, follow the Red Bull. That's the Red Bull model right there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. I mean, I know exactly what they. Those guys are the best marketers in the world. So. Uh, it's yeah. not, it's not even really a beverage company. It is a marketing company that happens to be involved with beverages and Formula yeah. One and I don't know what else they do, like the yeah. air yeah. airplane. Everything. I mean, put the ball everywhere. Like it's, it, yeah, it has nothing to do with, with 
And like, oh, it's energy. And they just do things that involve energy. Yep. Which is everything, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, let's not, yeah. let's not, that, I, I need to walk that back. Let's not minimize a beverage company here. Just. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you can surpass your own self, that's a great thing. So I'm not even, mm-hmm. you know, I, you know. We were uh, talking the other day about an upcoming destination for Formula One uh, built by the uh, booze magnet Paul Ricard um, in uh, in France, and he decided as an endeavor, just as a challenge for himself, to take up uh, designing and building a racetrack. So, you know, the future is aim big. You know, aim big. You oh can uh, <laughs> you can you can go from uh, making an anise flavored liqueur to uh, <laughs> building a racetrack and holding a Formula One race. <laughs> and this and, is going to get sent to your inbox or your dms directly but for those of you that don't know it's at gmu recruiting is the twitter handle uh that does such an amazing job so uh, if you're listening along and you don't already follow that's where you're going to want to follow um so uh let's let's talk a little bit more about uh where you are in your recovery process and uh kind of how you're feeling right now with uh, the way things are going, I know we talked about 50, 50, getting back, but, uh, how, how are you generally feeling physically as you're, as you're going along? Um, I am really ready to get off these crutches. They are very much an annoyance to my life, mm-hmm. but the recovery is slow, but it's good. I'm not, I don't want to rush it. Um, uh, want to get this leg back to a hundred percent. I yeah, can meniscal, meniscal te- tears like that are no, no joke for sure. Yeah. Yeah. My patella ruptured completely. Patella, yeah. So, um, that's I'm, it's going well. I would say that I'm percentage wise from, from four, I'm only a month in. So mm-hmm. did it um, on the 10th of what? June, June 10th is when I did it. June yeah. 9th, June 10th is when I had the surgery. So I'm a little bit over a month, a month and a quarter in. I, it's six, six to eight months. So I got a while. I'm still just working on getting my leg bent all the way and in both directions and trying to get this quad to wake up. So I got a long way. I'm not really trying to see the finish line. Just, just one step at a at a time. You know, one step a, a day. Every trying day to get right. Zone finish line. But, I, but I, my but my but my surgery went really well. So my knees feeling good. I don't have any pain. So actually, Liam chimes in here. He's he's got a couple of good questions, but one of them is going to be relevant. I'll again, since I'm the master <laughs> of the compound question, I'll ask you. Uh, I'll piggyback onto his. He asked you, how did the injury happen? And my second part of that is uh with the surgery did you have it over in portugal what was the care like there um and you know obviously your rehab has been over here but uh curious to know what the medical situation was in portugal uh with your team and everything like that um portugal has great medical service um i had the surgery the next then i had a tour in the in the afternoon in a in a daytime game and i had surgery the next the next morning so um, it got me right in and right to it. I had the, had a doctor who basically teaches the other doctors how to do these type of things. So I went to sleep peacefully. I wasn't worried about anything. Um, and he did a great job. Uh, I had a week where I had to be by myself out there, basically. But I was fine. I didn't have to do too much. So and I flew home a week later. I flew home in a, in a week after the surgery. So that's positive, but go into the negative how did the injury actually happen there we go that's what i wanted to say second all right so um i don't know if it's a pick and roll or i'm coming down the left side kind of wide open my point guard brad to shout out b rad you, you. um brad tinsley um is, is driving right i'm coming left i know the lob is coming he know the lob is coming he's even getting swaggy he's coming like like with that, and I'm going, I plant right, left. I, I know it's coming now. There's a rivalry game. I'm the force on the team, you know, so I'm physical. If I get a tech, I get a tech, and I'm going to swing on the rim. I'm going to slap the glass. It's going to get, I might push somebody. I don't know. Who knows what was going to happen after that dunk? The way I, we, we had the timing perfectly, and he was dropping it like this. I had the timing perfect. I was going to really get aggressive on the rim, guys. Um, as soon as I went, come up. I just boom, it blew. And I knew exactly what it was when it happened. Right away, I knew it. I was like, ah, that's, I, first I just yeah, it's over. That's it. That's it. You didn't like so, step on anybody's foot or anything. You nobody just touched me. Nobody Ugh. touched me. Yeah, the non contact yeah, injury the strikes again. Yeah, untouched, untouched. So it wasn't my first time. I don't know if you guys know this, but I 
I actually tore it from my patella in at age 15 in Vegas in a tournament playing with oh, um, did Adidas, not know that. Mm-hmm. Adidas Florida. Same team, one? So same one. So mm. I knew exactly what happened and it just was like, oh, man, I was just just You knew it was coming, you know. I all did that not stuff. know it was coming. I was feeling good. I was really gonna feeling good and it's just like boom. Mm-hmm. Quiet before the storm. So it was I was not happy. Um but like I said, I, 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 I cried for an hour. I just, I was, I was at, in the back of the ambulance, just like, man, like almost got to the season, almost got that championship. So, yeah, but after that hour, I was like, all right, I mean, we make, you want to, you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. So, you know, <laughs> I, I planned this and planned that. I had a launch party coming. And all these things also, if we want to talk about, more about Live 21, I had all these things waiting for me back in America. And it's like, you're doing all these things and you're going to do them on one leg. <laughs> so, just a, that's all that is, is just a degree of difficulty. That's all that is. All right. So, I was, you know, my teammates came to the hospital, showed me love, you know, had some laughs. Um, so I was, I was good. I was in, in about an hour or two, I got, got myself backing up in a happy mental space, counting my blessings and, and, um, life doesn't happen till you happen, uh, till you, it happens, um, uh, for you, you know, so you just got to keep, keep going. I think at this point, uh, just want to remind anybody that's, that's listening, uh, be sure to hit the like button. If you're watching this on a replay, you can subscribe to us here at expat hoops. Uh, you get lots of great content. Like, we're sitting down with Mike now for probably the third time. Uh, always appreciate his time. Um, you can also share this along to other people, share it, make sure that this grows. Uh, we really enjoy what we're doing here and bringing this content to you. So make sure that you share it with your friends, give it a like, uh, subscribe. Uh, of course, if you're watching live, keep the questions coming. One of the questions that Liam actually had before that I didn't get to that I want to circle back to uh, with Live 21 is, uh, do you chug it before you sleep or do you sip it as you're drinking? So like how exactly... Cause we're dumb. God, Liam, Explain I it to us you, like man. we're five. Liam, uh, <laughs> I love you, Liam. You're my favorite person in the world. I give you a good <laughs> shout out on Twitter. Um, so initially, it was drink during or after while you're drinking. Um, so you're drinking your alcohol. You can also drink live twenty one or directly after, just or at least before you go to sleep and you'll wake up feeling good. After the launch, we found through people drinking it and tagging us and friends and saying, like, yo, this, have you mixed it with alcohol? Like, this tastes good with the alcohol as a chaser. Um, mixing with vodka, mixing with tequila, mixing with cognacs, whiskeys, mimosas, literally everything. Like, we mixed it. It's like, hey, I did not expect it. Did not even think of, didn't make it for that purpose. But back, back to Red Bull. Red Bull, write me a check. Back to Red Bull. They didn't make this energy energy drink with intent on vodka Red Bull. It just happened to go good with vodka Red Bull. Like, oh, yeah, well, another avenue to, to, to sell. So we're actually now selling it with, with mixed drinks also. So um, mm-hmm. an, another way of can you imagine drinking you using drinking using a nice drink and getting the electrolytes you need to recover also at the same time? Yeah, that's that's what's happening. I yeah, I gotta say, tell you, it's probably berry sounds really good. So it, uh, it probably tastes a lot better than uh, than Gatorade with alcohol does. I'll say. Oh that. yeah, because Gatorade's watered down. It doesn't. This mm-hmm. has a stronger mm-hmm. taste, so it mixes well. They 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 kind of cut each other really well. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. Yeah. Any Gatorade's of these brands are listening, by the way. We'll all take money from you. Just uh, yes, give yes. us a call. Red Bull, cut me a up. check. I'm telling you, mm-hmm. cut mm-hmm. me a check because you guys are doing a lot of things well. But uh, I think somebody's coming for you. I don't know. <laughs> There you go. It's uh, put it on a sideline while you're at it. That'll be uh, that'll be good. I actually have an interesting question for you here. You mentioned Kickstarter earlier on, and that's something that I, I was able to see through your website. Uh, I think you referenced it too that uh, before it, or there's a few days still to get involved with Kickstarter. Uh, is that something that you're still essentially open uh, for yes. people to do? And what uh, do they get by certain, I don't know if it's buy-in levels or whatever. Again, explain it to me like I'm five uh, because that's pretty uh, much where I'm at. I wish I had more products on me right now, but um, my best friend Reggie, the co-founder is also 
and said also had his own clothing line in the past and he's very stylish young man so our merch is high level much like um i'm gonna keep shouting people out much like liquid death who is a can of water but it looks like a beer almost yep. but their merch is selling through the roof because it's it's good merch because it's liquid have, death it sounds cool it sounds cool and you know we have very very nice snap bash we got reversible um um bucket hats we got dad hats we got shirts we got a uh high-end jersey uh we have all different type of different things on there so and i'm gonna put that in the chat at least where the kickstarter is because yes. you can scroll yeah. down and you can scroll see down, the merch look at all the merch it's really I mean, nice stuff from what i see there's a couple different bucket hats both look nice there's at least a that's, couple well, hold on that's a one bucket hat it's reversible so oh get both in one it's reversible oh. bucket hat. i told you he was fashionable <laughs> okay all right yeah, yeah and it's good quality things like you, when you grab when you have it you can be like oh this is a, this is nice like i don't like it's not falling apart so. and now i see the it's a football jersey all right that's uh that's there too uh t-shirts made to order which I think that you and him are also wearing the t-shirts in some of the pictures. So certainly there's plenty there to go take a look at. Um, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of words that I am not going to read right now because we're recording at the end do of not, the long day. Do not, do not just know that the merch is, is fire. So if you like swagging up, you know, swag up, but um, the drink, the main thing, get that too. We're going to get the drink with the merch. So that's the thing. Um, even if you're not drinking, it's more electrolytes than Pedialyte. So if you just need to be replenished, it works for that too. It is actually a health drink, even though we're not advertising it as such. So I've done this before. We talked to you a couple of times and we talked about, uh, we actually interviewed you like early, early on in the podcast. You were like, what, episode two or three? I was wondering if I was one, but I said I probably wasn't no, one. No, one was that Tony was Skin. Skin. That was easy for uh, us to remember. Tony, uh... <laughs> Number one on the jersey, on the number job, one in coach. the episodes. Yeah. Congratulations <laughs> on the new job. Ugh, can't oh, yeah. Nothing. Um, but, uh, we may not have asked you that in, in, uh, in this, in that interview, because it was pretty early on and I, we, you know, we had some standard questions that we were still working on and going through, um, top destinations you played at and, uh, what, uh, how would you rank them, uh, off the court in particular? If I had to ask you to choose between Bangkok, Istanbul and Athens, would you be able to do that? Mm. it's not an easy thing to do it's not <laughs> it's not um i can give you mount rushmore's but i can't i can't get your order all right let's oh, do that that's then. a better way of saying it your mount rushmore go. of where yeah, you play yeah i can't tell you let's put Frank him on a pedestal frankfurt is 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 home home base that's home for me um and the city was dope. We had a lot of fun there. Off the court, we're talking off the court. Had a lot of fun off mm -hmm. the court. Was it the biggest place? No, but off the court has to do with your teammates stuff. We had a lot of fun in Frankfurt, and we're gonna we're gonna make Frankfurt hold Würzburg's hand because it's all Germany. Würzburg was a lot of fun. They weren't too far from each other. Um, Istanbul is Istanbul. Athens is Athens, and I don't know if you've seen Hangover too, but Bangkok. Everything that you see in that movie is real. It's it's a wild place. <laughs> so I like to have fun. All those places really had a lot going. So that's my Mount Rushmore. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Um actually, here, let's do this. Of let's let's just keep it. Well, I'm trying to think here. So we got specific recommendations for Porto on behalf of David, but when when we'd say best place to eat that you've ever had overseas and best place Ooh. to drink at overseas, let's go there. Mm, man, best place to eat. Thailand, people will love their street food, but Thailand was way too spicy for me. I don't like spicy food. Um, so I actually had a hard time eating there. Best place to eat might be pretty easily Greece. Um, that food is so good. And it's healthy. Healthy in their world. But that food is so good. It's, it's, it's weird. Like It's really good. And it's cheap. It's good food. It's nice. Greece is by far the best place to be. Best place to drink? You went to Finland. Wow. Right? Through the curveball and let you. Everywhere has alcohol. So everywhere has beers. But Finland has 
one, their long drinks, which is a their their own like gin and juice mixed cans that they just love, and it brings you into the culture almost. But two, they have sauna parties, Ooh. which is all you, your whole team, all you guys, you go to these places and it's, we, it's a, they, a whole bunch of food, you're playing cards, you're drinking, you're laughing, and the sauna's attached and it's just a, it's just a good day. So um, I'm going I'm to give Phil in the edge on that one. Um, if we're talking specific, specifically drinking, yeah. And a close second will be German, Germany because their beer is special. Very My goodness. So. My goodness, the beer is special, and the places you drink them in are usually pretty special too. In a lot yeah, of cases. I have, but to be fair to Germany, to be fair, I have not been to Oktoberfest. I've been up the road for a game mm-hmm. in Munich, watching mm-hmm. people walk up in their Wiener Hausens, and I was like, "Dang, I just want to go out there, man! Just give me one day." But, but yeah, so I'm gonna give those two to the win for the for the drinking. Yeah, I actually went to uh, Munich outside of Oktoberfest as well, specifically because I wanted to experience the city outside of Oktoberfest. Because, like, when you go to Munich during Oktoberfest, if you're not there for Oktoberfest, like, <laughs> you're kind of feeling left out, you know? You, yeah, it's yeah, it's sure. FOMO, and everything that's going on around you is Oktoberfest-related. So yeah. I was like, all right, when we go there this time, experience the city and all that stuff, and and it's it's quite a it's quite a place. Munich is dope. I like Munich a lot. Germany's just a, a nice place in general, man. It's like it's just it's the people are super cool. I got I still talk to a lot of my German teammates. For sure, for sure. Um let's see. Is there anything else we got off the top of your head? Andy, you got anything? I don't know. As I was looking a little bit in the chat, I think David was saying, tell me more in regards to the Finland situation. And I know Sean chimed in and said Oktoberfest <laughs> was cool. So uh yeah, the the part about Finland is that's not yeah, something that's, I that's was really expecting. intriguing. That yeah. was a true I've never heard of that before. That was a true curveball. They drink, they drink out there. Um, those well, cold that, places, that doesn't surprise me. The fact that those it's cold good. places know how they, they mm. drink, and you know, it's not like big fancy places. You went to was really like super small. Um, but I had a, we had a lot of fun. I just that cold just beat me up really badly. I remember one day, um, me being a Floridian idiot trying that doesn't know how to deal with snow or cold was tired of shoveling my the ice off the car to go to practice. I remember this from the and, last time we sat down. Yeah, and I poured the, the water the water onto the, the the windshield to try to melt the snow off of it. And a big thick layer of ice froze over the, the windshield. I was like, you're an idiot. I think <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's been a little bit of time since we had, but I feel like the first time you told that story, when it first happened, you're like, this is smart. I got it all figured out. This oh, is yeah. Figure. I was like, this and then you started genius. driving like, and then started like freezing up, right? No, I was gen- no, no, no. I, was, I thought it was genius before. I was like, hot water, duh. It melts ice. Why are you sc- scraping? Just melt, the- melt it off. Poured it on there. It froze right away. It froze <laughs> right away. And right away, you couldn't see anything. I had to ride with my head out the window in negative weather to practice. That was it. Now, now it's coming to the end. Oh, the I was just like, you're su- that was just like such a your stupid moment. Welcome Man. to Finland. <laughs> yeah so. uh, man um what do you think uh andy can we get enough uh, money eventually to get us an expat hoop sauna i don't know we possible. also have got to do the uh we've got to be able to try to cover this stuff in person like i said we got it. the michelin guide is overrated we need to do the expat hoops uh guide to the world uh, yes, for sure and for sure. do food and beverages uh yes. it sounds like we're off to a good start here with some of these recommendations uh, and we also have a recovery drink as well, which honestly sounds really good. Uh, the lemon berry is something that is super intriguing to me because one of my my favorite uh, desserts actually is like usually when you have like blueberries and lemon put together. Mm-hmm. So this is right up my alley. I'm I'm very I'm excited. You, it's really nice. It's really nice. It's good and it works. The main thing is it works. So you know, have a few beers and you're like ah, to be up in the morning. You're going to wake up and be like, did you drink ever? Did you even drink that night? So it works. Yep. And so that's, uh, you guys are big in the Tampa area right now, but within a few days, uh, it's going to be going even more. We've put a link to the mm-hmm. Kickstarter in yeah. the chat. Uh, surely you should be checking that out. Look for the cool merch that you get at the different levels. Um, I think that's just about everything that we have for tonight. But thank you to everybody that has been in the chat where we're going to keep on doing this sort of thing, especially over the summers when some of our fantastic guests are on the same time zone as us. It makes it so much easier to do. 
Yes. Uh, we're happy to be interactive and there's really almost not a better guest to have to be interactive than Mr. Mike Morrison himself. Appreciate y'all, man. I really do. Um, all love for the expat family. You know, I like coming on here and talking with you guys. Well, likewise, uh, always happy to talk to you. Should do it more often, uh, but you're a busy guy. Uh, even this recovery, I'm sure will go very well for you. We're, we're hoping for the best for you. Know you're, you'll have a good recovery, whether you play basketball or not. I'm sure you'll, you know, again, professionally, uh, you're going to be doing some great things and we're always happy to keep in contact with you and support you. Uh, but again, everybody check out just live 21 on I'm Instagram. Calling right, I'm calling it right now. I mean, to cut off my own promo. Go ahead. Just oh, no. 21 on Instagram at just live L I V 21 on Instagram and on the website. Same thing. When I'm calling it right now, man, George Mason about to have a breakthrough year. So, um, if you ain't ready, get ready. Them boys look good out there, right? They they coming. They do. They, they look coming. really good. So let's go. I think that's as good a party shot as anything. Mike Morrison, Andy Hoverman, Tony Budney. We'll see you next time. It's a lifestyle, baby. For sure. We off to YouTube now?